So, um, thanks for this opportunity to present my progress on this on this work. I'm Massimo Sferza, and uh, I'm presenting a global, local, monolithic, multidisciplinary architecture for the optimization or of aircraft composite structures with critical areas. I am uh, one of the ESRs, part of the Optimax project, um, which is in general about the optimization of composite structures. My focus is on uh, global local approaches. So, in general, when we optimize an aircraft um, or an aircraft structure, maybe just a wing, we want to minimize its weight or maximize a measure uh, of the aircraft performance. And we have to do that considering several constraint types, several disciplines, and multiple load cases. So the current procedure that uh, is in place at Airbus is based on two steps. Uh, the first sizes the overall model, uh, but considering some areas fixed. So non-regular areas are kept fixed. So if you consider a model such as this one as an entire wing, there are some parts like bulkheads, stringer runouts and manholes, which uh, are not considered during the optimization. And uh, not only they're not sized, they're also not subject to any type of constraint. And this is because these areas are uh, complex, would require a complex modeling, and including them in the optimization would be would result in a procedure which is computationally too expensive. And in the second step, these areas are checked for strength and buckling constraints, and they are checked individually in um, separate local models, one by one. So the problem with this kind of approach is that uh, non-regular areas uh, tend to be very important for the optimization procedure. So neglecting the details uh, leads to problems because they are heavy and design driving. And so not considering them in detail leads to an inaccurate overall weight estimation and also in a change in the load carrying behavior of the structure if we don't have a precise uh, an estimation of the stiffness of these parts. So we are in this situation in which local information is needed during the overall sizing, but at the same time, uh, including all the details would be too computationally expensive. So what we suggest is a modified procedure uh, which is going to be a global local procedure based on a monolithic architecture which considers only static at local level. So we try to find a balance between uh, the level of detail, uh, detailed information that is provided to the gro global instance and the uh, uh, overall complexity of the procedure. And one way of saving uh, computation power is to limit ourselves to statics at local level. And this is reasonable because for the local models in the end, we just want to check uh, whether we comply to strength and buckling constraints. And we also need the local models to provide a precise stiffness and mass uh, estimation for the global procedure to work in order to compute the correct solution uh, in, in order to correctly simulate the overall structural behavior. Uh, additionally, these several local models can be solved in parallel. So this is another way in which uh, we might uh, obtain some computational savings. The general concept, as I said, is a global local uh, procedure. I also mentioned that it is, it is a monolithic architecture which means that it is based on uh, one optimization loop. So we solve just one uh, optimization problem. We want to minimize the weight of the overall structure. Uh, we have all the design variables and all the constraints cons uh, considered at once. 
and uh, so the optimizer is independent from the global local formulation doesn't see a difference between global and local design variables or global and local constraints which also means that we might focus on the two aspects of this global local formulation the first one is the global local analysis and the other one is the sensitivity analysis so for the global local analysis we uh, I will explain this later in detail, but in general, we provide some information to the global model and solve it. Then uh, for each global solution that we have, we can use it as a boundary condition to um, inform the local models and solve them as well. And the other part, which is the sensitivity analysis, simply means providing the optimizer with F and G, so the objective and the constraints and their corresponding uh, gradients. So let us uh, assume that the structure I have below here is the overall structure I want to study. So I have a, a blue square on the left, which represents the global model, and the yellow square on the right, representing the local model, and this white uh, grid points uh, mark the interface between the two. So the first step of the global local analysis is uh, based on the local model. We focus on the local model and we apply uh, GUI and condensation. So we effectively reduce this overall system of equation for static analysis uh, to this one, which is defined only with respect to the uh, interface nodes. So instead of considering the overall structure, we neglect the yellow dots and focus on, on this part, condense all the stiffness and load information with respect to these nodes. Now we can go to the global solution. And um, so we, in order to solve it and to compute the correct solution for this, we need to provide local information uh, to the global model. And so we have the K and P that comes from the local model reduction. We can add these terms to the global system of equation and compute the correct solution for the blue and the white grid points. Once we have a displacement field for these, we can go back to the local model and uh, use this solution for the interface nodes as a boundary condition to compute also this displacement field uh, of the inner local nodes. The second aspect of the global local formulation is the sensitivity analysis. And uh, that means uh, at the beginning we want to evaluate the objective, so the weight of the overall structure. And this is done simply by adding the global weight uh, to the local, uh, to the weight of the local models. And uh, regarding the constraints, we simply glue them together, uh, considering global and local uh, constraints at once. Then we have to take the derivatives of these three quantities. So for the gradient of the objective, we derive it with respect to global and local design variables. And of course, the weight of the global structure doesn't directly depend on local design variables and vice versa. Local uh, weight does not depend on global quantities, so this relation is very simple. We have something that is global with respect to global and something that is local with respect to local. So this doesn't require any special treatment. Uh, it's a bit more complicated when we go to the gradient of the constraints. Here we have global and local constraints, and when we derive with respect to global and local design variables, we have four possibilities, which are represented by the four sub-blocks of this Jacobian. And um, if we expand these terms, this is what we get. And I won't go into the details here. I just want to uh, focus your attention on these two terms, which are the only terms in which we have the dependency of something in the global with respect to the local or vice versa. Uh, DUL, so something in the local model with respect to global design variables. For these two terms, we will require uh, special treatment. 
Now, to summarize the procedure, it's an optimization procedure. We start with a, an initial design and then we enter the optimization loop. It's a monolithic architecture, so we only have one big optimization loop. At first, we do the global local analysis, so we provide the global with local information, we solve the global, and we have several global displacement fields for different subcases and um, possibly different types of analysis. We use the solution as a boundary condition for the local model and compute the local solution as well. Then we perform the global local sensitivity analysis. We provide all the information to the optimizer and we can update the design. And what's interesting about this procedure is that we might uh, consider several disciplines at the global level while only limit ourselves to statics in the, for the local model to evaluate strength and buckling constraints. And this additionally could be done uh, in parallel because once we have a global solution, all the local models can be solved uh, independently. Regarding the details of the implementation, as the others, I work with Lagrange, which is a software developed and used by Airbus for multidisciplinary structural optimization. And it can be used as a finite element solver. Uh, but it can also be used as an optimization tool and it comes with a Python interface, which means that the approach I have implemented is um, a general uh, procedure that uh, only deals with an exchange between a finite element solver and an optimizer and it could be in principle uh, be replicated using other solvers which come with an API. Um, in particular, for the global local analysis, I create two instances uh, of Lagrange, one to be used as a finite element solver for the global model and one for the local model. And then I have a Python script, which handles the exchange of information between the two. For the sensitivity analysis, the um, procedure is similar. Uh, but additionally, we have a third Lagrange instance which acts as an optimizer. So this could be replicated with two, um, with a finite element solver for these two instances of another software, for example, Nastern, and uh, another separate optimization tool which would take the place of this Lagrange instance. The interaction for sensitivity analysis is a bit more complicated. But I want to draw your attention to the fact that this Python instance in the middle defines a clear interface uh, between the two, uh, between the, this part on the left and this part on the right. So at first it gets information from the finite element solvers. Um, it additionally performs some computation at Python level uh, to take care of the interaction between the two and to compute the cross derivatives. And then all the information uh, is used to feed the optimizer and update the design. Lastly, I'd like to present some preliminary results. In this case, I have um, static analysis, just a static analysis, not an optimization for this model, which represents a wing box. And you see the same model here in gray and here uh, on the right in blue and yellow. So I took the same model and I uh, defined an inner part, this yellow part, as my local model. And when I perform a static analysis, uh, what I would expect is to get the exact same result with a normal static analysis and the global local um, based approach. And this is indeed the case. Uh, we can also consider uh, a quantitative evaluation of the errors. So these are three tables for three different load cases of the same Winbox model. And uh, if you look at the percentage errors and in general, the other error metrics, you see that the results are uh, comparable and actually uh, the same.
The other example I want to present is about the overall optimization. So for this, I consider this simple model of a stringer as a verification example. Um, again, on the left, you see the model in black, which is treated as a unique finite element model. And on the right, you see the same model has been divided into a global part in blue and a local part in yellow. And we want to minimize the weight of the stringer uh, subject to some strength constraints. And uh, as design variables, we use the thicknesses of these um, 2D elements, of these shell elements. So here, uh, in this figure, you can see that uh, all the elements uh, which have the same color are associated to one design variables, one design variable, and so they will receive a unique thickness at the end of the optimization. And if we check the results, we see that the updated thicknesses of the structure are absolutely uh, the same, whether we use a classical approach or a global local formulation. And we can also look at the evolution of the optimization uh, throughout the optimization process. So here we see uh, the initial design and five different iteration. Initially, the objective, so the weight of this stringer is a little less than half a kilogram. And we start with some constraint violation. And as we progress, the constraint violation is uh, reduced to zero and the weight slightly increases. And this result, the result is the same in both cases, which is exactly what we would expect since the optimizer uh, doesn't see a difference, um, doesn't uh, uh, see the global local formulation underneath. So in conclusion, um, the current procedure extends an existing MDO procedure providing local information to the global uh, part of the model and anticipates local sizing. So we additionally size the local part, which was kept fixed in the original procedure. Uh, future work will be the inclusion of other disciplines at global level, because what I've shown you uh, so far is just uh, statics. Um, extend this procedure to multiple models to be solved in parallel and to evaluate the overall computational performance. Um, part of this Optimax project, although there won't be a direct interaction, uh, might be a collaboration with Giuseppe, so possibly I will use some of his failure criteria within my optimization. And with this, I have concluded my presentation. Um, lastly, I, I only want to thank all the people uh, that supervise me at the University of Nottingham and Airbus, and additionally, Christoph Hofer at RISC, which helps me in particular with the software implementation. And I also would like to thank the European Union for providing the funding for the Optimax project. Thanks.